I call the honour member Tim Macken. Thank you, Mr Chair, and I'd actually like to pick up where my colleague, uh, the Honourable Chris Tremaine, has just left off, because I think that he has touched on some quite uh, relevant issues. I am um, a late starter in this particular debate, and so I apologise to the fine member who was sponsoring the bill that I was unable to hear everything that he uh, told the House earlier on in the evening. But nevertheless, on this particular clause three, which is amending the Electronic Transactions Act, and I'm very interested that the Honourable Member, Chris Tremaine, had a copy of it there. That bill was only passed 12 years ago, sir. And I dare say that there could be members of the public listening to this debate who would wonder why it would be necessary to move an amendment to something of that nature in a relatively short space of time. And in fact, I'm intrigued as I look around the House on this side of the House and over, um, with the exception of the Minister of Health uh, in the back area where the Green members are now, that there isn't a single member of, uh, in the House on the side this evening who is actually a member of Parliament at that time. And so I do think that if we're going to make a decision of this magnitude in amending the Principal Act, we do need to be able to hear from the member as thoroughly as we can what the reasons are for his, his feeling that this particular Principal Act needs to be amended. The member told us also, and this really concerned me, that the Principal Act in 2002 was passed under urgency. And I know that there are many members on this side of the House who over the last few years have sometimes quite unfairly been accused of such um, grandiose things as a br an abuse of process or a breach of uh, parliamentary procedure or whatever, whenever the suggestion is that a matter should be passed under urgency. And of course there have been some significant things. Budgets are frequently passed under urgency, we passed the Auckland Governance uh, legislation under urgency and a number of other things have happened. And so usually oppositions howl and scream whenever that happens and yet here we are learning that the previous Labour-led government passed that particular act under urgency back in 2002. Sure. And I therefore ask the member sponsoring the bill if he could please, when he next takes a call, give us a little bit of the history of the issue, or maybe there'll be a member of the Labour opposition. I see Mr Cosgrove, who's been here since 1842, he might be able to tell us why the, mem why the member, Paul Swain, <laughs> took... Saw Order. the need, Order. saw the need. I, actually, Mr. Uh, Chair, I think that was a particularly unparliamentary expression from Mr. Cosgrave. That's not the expression that he used, and he well knows it. Um, but anyway, I'll turn the other cheek and we'll carry on. Um, but the point is, I would appreciate him taking a call to tell us why the previous Labour led government felt it was necessary to pass that principal act under urgency. What were the reasons for that? Because it certainly doesn't obviously lend itself to that sort of treatment, an Electronic Transactions Act. And as I say, we have had to listen to many um, lectures in our time in, the, in government as to why that's not an appropriate way of acting. I'd also like to know what was the actual vote at the time that that happened. If it was passed under urgency, well, I haven't had a chance to look at Hansard because I've only just become aware of the fact, and that's why I'm saying to the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove, take a call, fill us in as to why you and your colleagues at that time felt it was necessary to move this particular act under urgency. Tell us what the vote was. I'd be interested to know how the House divided. Of the parties, of the parties that were here at that time, which parties supported the measure, which were opposed to it, and what were their reasons for it. But more importantly, what was the actual purpose of the Principal Act? Because we do need to know that if we're going to be able to make a considered decision about amending it. And this is not a trivial point, because, Mr Speaker, as the Honourable Chris Tremaine was to, uh, noting just a few minutes ago, technology is evolving rapidly. It is actually quite frightening at times just how quickly technological change is taking over and quite often you get to my age and you think where's a, ch where's a teenager when you need, need one in order to understand the latest technological gadget. I have to admit I had that experience just a few days ago. Every year it seems that there's a new gadget on the market. We're being expected to be able to become more and more proficient with gadgets that quite often now are being used for electronic transactions. And so it is important, not only that we know how to use them, but that we can ensure the security of those transactions when we are using all this technology. Now, Mr Chair, 
You and I are both old enough still to have checkbooks, and I'll bet you still have one, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. I Chair. Call the honourable member. And I certainly, uh, I certainly have a checkbook. I have to admit that at times I feel a bit of a dinosaur when I use it. And in fact, when I look at it, it tends to be mainly nowadays for charitable donations. I certainly don't pay accounts with cheques anymore. I do most of those things online. But I'm sure that we've all had the odd occasion of being a little bit fearful about how that is going. And in fact, as an electorate MP, more than once I've had constituents who have been concerned about the security of those transactions. So I do ask the member in charge of the bill, as we focus on clause three, this particular clause in which it is the, the whole purpose is to amend the Principal Act, if he could give us that history, please, as to why it is necessary to do this, what was it about the original Act that he now considers to be flawed, and what is it about what he is proposing to do now that will enhance the security? Because, Mr. Speaker, Mr Chair, I also make the point that the government has set a very ambitious target under the Better Public Services target, which is a cornerstone of our administration, of ensuring that a substantial number of transactions that used to take some time, involved a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of waiting, quite often a lot of expense, are now available online. And we were talking about the sort of things as applying for a passport or maybe obtaining a visa to go to another country. We all, I'm sure, welcome anything that reduces cost and improves the efficiency and the speed with which things can be done. But it is, of course, absolutely vital that we ha can be assured of the security of these matters. Uh, we want to ensure that there can be no danger of uh, theft of identity, misappropriation of funds, misuse of the um, particular technology which could lead to it. Because, M Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, we only need to th think about the fact that if somebody was dishonest enough maybe to look over the gallery and see a member on this side or on that side of the House putting a PIN number into a smartphone or something which could easily happen, does often happen as members use their iPads and their iPhones in this House frequently. It is possible sometimes for members of the public to look over the gallery if they were sufficiently savvy to be able to pick up the PIN number of a member and then to get hold of that appliance. Then they've got the ability with that contraption to get into the member's account to do all sorts of manner of evil. And, Mr Chair, that is a very real possibility. And so we need to know from the member in charge of this bill, was that sort of eventuality contemplated by the member at the time that this bill was originally being pushed through in 2002, and is Clause 3, by which the Principal Act is going to be amended, a way in which those sorts of concerns can be alleviated? They are not insignificant questions, Mr Chair, because with the rapid evolution of technology, it is likely that we will become even more dependent on these technological gadgets in years to come, that electronic transactions will probably become the entire way in which transactions are conducted in the future. And we need to be absolutely sure that the legislation that the member is putting forward in this House tonight will be sufficient as we move forward into that era. And so I do ask the member in charge of the bill if he could address himself to that as well and perhaps alert us to whether there are any matters in the bill, as he's putting it forward, that would cover future eventualities. And so, Mr Chair, I believe that this is a significant issue. I realise there's been some levity in some of the contributions, and that's good. On a member's day, it's always nice to feel that there's a degree of jocularity in the House. <laughs> that members can enjoy a little bit of banter across the... But nevertheless, this is a significant matter. I am a little bit envious because this particular member has achieved something in half the time that I've been in the House that I haven't been able to do, and that is to get a member drawn out of the ballot and to be able to have the, the honour of pushing it through. So I congratulate him on that, and I do look forward to his answers to the questions that I've put forward, because I believe that they are a significant. We need to get them onto the record. I look forward to hearing his next contribution. And I, know, I know that my good friend, the Honourable Todd McClay, has one or two other questions that he wants the member to consider as well, and so I hope that the member in charge of the bill will be able to deal with both of them in his next contribution. Mr. Chair. Ju Mr. Chair. Order, order, order. Just before I call the next member, I just want to caution members about name calling, which occurred during um, the debate. Let us remember that all members are honourable, and all will get a fair and equitable opportunity to address the people's business. 
within the standing orders that govern our proceedings. And by and large, name calling comes through frustration, and that's understood, but it is out of order as a personal reflection, and I refer members to standing order 117 and speaker's rulings 28 bar 1, because it can lead to disorder. I call the honourable member Carol Beaumont. Mr Chair, I move the motion be now put. I, I think I might take one more. I'll call the Honourable Todd McClay. Thank you, Mr Chair. I move that the question not be put because I want to uh, intervene in this part of the debate and talk about the Principal Act. I was not going to, but indeed uh, when the Honourable Chris Remain spoke... Uh, uh